stunned, sad sea of mourners lined the streets in the rain as Abraham Lincoln's casket was taken from the White House to the Capitol on the day of the assassinated president's funeral. Tens of thousands of people filed past the body lying in state, but millions would see it as Abraham Lincoln made what is probably the most extraordinary train journey in American history, home to Springfield, Illinois. People traveled for miles over rugged country just to see the train that carried the body of President Lincoln. Robert Reed wrote an account of Lincoln's funeral train. They got in the horse-drawn wagons. They got on horseback. They walked. These weren't interstates. These were very primitive paths to the rail track. The train carried not just Lincoln's body, but that of his 11-year-old son, Willie, who had died of typhoid fever in 1862. It left Washington on April 21, 1865, its route covering nearly 1,700 miles. It stopped in state capitals and major cities such as Philadelphia, New York, Cleveland, Chicago, but avoided the places where Confederate sympathizers might have made trouble. A presidential car was under construction at the time of the assassination. It was almost completed. It was more or less what you consider the Air Force One of today. But when the assassination occurred, there was a dramatic change, and they tore all the inside structure out of that and made it a hearse car. It was draped in black, the coffin placed on an elevated platform. Even at night, they had special lights so you could actually see in and see the casket. Imagine the entire way, not just in towns and cities, hundreds, sometimes thousands of people stood along the tracks for hours. There's over 400 places, cities and towns and villages and even little bypasses that the train went through and it slowed down and maybe stopped. During each stop, the casket was removed and the same spectacle repeated. This photograph shows a young Theodore Roosevelt staring down at the procession to City Hall in New York City, where more than 100,000 people viewed Lincoln's remains. At each stop, whites and blacks stood side by side, although at times uneasily. For instance, in New York, there's an attempt, at least, to keep African Americans out of the procession when they're moving the body from the venue where it's being viewed to the train station. Howard University so professor Edna Green Medford is one of the few African American Lincoln scholars. In almost every procession, Although African Americans were there and they were allowed to participate in these processions, they were put at the back of the line. Lincoln had ended slavery, but what next was unclear. African American grief, I think, is shaped not just by the fact that the country has lost this great leader, but African Americans felt that they had lost their future because they really counted on Lincoln to protect them. And so now that protection had been taken away. The train passed through Knightstown, Indiana, on Sunday, April 30th, day 10 of its 13-day trip to Springfield. As is the case in most of the towns and cities it passed through, there is no marker, nothing, to recall the event. Which is why historian Robert Reed, a resident of Knightstown, wrote his book, struggling to finish before dying of cancer last June. People in the town would be singing hymns and, and, and chanting prayers. And as that faded away into the distance in the dark, you could then hear the next town, the next village, of, of people doing the very same thing. An embalmer and a funeral director were on the train full time, constantly attempting to refresh the unrefrigerated corpse, less and less successfully. Once Lincoln was buried on May 4th, amazingly, nobody thought to preserve or display the historic hearse car. It was sold several times, 
and eventually was destroyed by fire in 1911. Souvenir hunters were told to take what they wanted. This lamp here, we believe, was on the car. We have some documentation that says it is. That type or that actual lamp? This, these are the actual lamps. There's two of them. For the last five years, in Elgin, Illinois, Dave Clokey and several train enthusiast friends have been building a replica of Lincoln's hearse car. They matched photographs of the outside. The inside was harder. The only photograph we have is when it's in disrepair at the end of its life. That's how we figured out where the stateroom was. This is what it looked like three months ago. This is where his coffin would have been for the mm -hmm. funeral. And this is what it looked like completed. Uh, this is the exact replica of his coffin, the size, the shape. In Springfield, last weekend during 150th anniversary commemorations of Lincoln's final homecoming. We worked on the car all the way till Tuesday, and that's when we came down here. So wow. it's you did. Right Excellent. to the last minute. Excellent. Yeah. It was a labor of love for the two dozen or so volunteers who built it by hand. As you go down the hall, folks, the uh, next room is Lincoln's stateroom. That's where he would have slept had he used the car. They've raised less than half of its $350,000 cost. They'd like to see it in a museum, but so far there's been no interest. And just like the first time around, the reenactment of that final solemn procession, the bearing of Abraham Lincoln's casket through the streets of Springfield at last, to the vault where he would be laid to rest, took center stage. But unlike in 1865, the builders of this replica are determined that Lincoln's funeral car and its remarkable story will not be lost again. <laughs>